Part of the reason the Fifth Crusade failed was the lack of leadership. Frederick II of Germany would have been the obvious leader, but though he took the Crusader vow, he never showed up to take part. Reminded continually to make good on his vow, he finally incurred the penalty of excommunication. Due to a marriage, he ended up also becoming king of Jerusalem, which finally motivated him enough to travel to the Holy Land. Due to the excommunication, Frederick was unpopular and distrusted by his men because a crusade was not simply a military campaign, but an act of devotion and a means of salvation, so could not be led by an excommunicate. Instead of attempting to rescue Jerusalem, Frederick made a deal with the Muslim Sultan Al-Kamil. Frederick was given Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and Nazareth during a ten-year truce, but Jerusalem would have to remain defenseless and unfortified, and the Muslims would be allowed to administer their own people separately. It was merely a legalistic victory, and after the truce expired, the Muslims simply took Jerusalem back. St. Louis IX, King of France, went on two crusades, which were really the greatest devotional acts of his life. Today he is more thought of for his care of the poor and devotion to the Eucharist, since those acts translate much better to our own time than waging war to defend Christians in the Middle East. Still, for Louis, the liberation of Jerusalem was the single most cherished goal in his life. He decided to follow the plan of the Fifth Crusade and return to Egypt to lay siege to Damietta. Upon arrival, they found the city undefended and empty, for the residents did not want a repeat of the destructive siege of the Fifth Crusade. Just like the Fifth Crusade, they again marched to Mansura. Another Crusader lord, Robert of Artois, foolishly decided to prematurely attack without Louis, and the results were disastrous. Almost all of Robert's forces were killed. After a bloody battle just to survive, Louis's forces lacked enough numbers to even try to attack Mansura. They were forced to surrender. The nobility, including Louis, were taken prisoner, but the poor and sick crusaders were massacred. Even after Louis and the nobility were released, thousands remained in hostage. Having failed in Egypt, Louis traveled to the Holy Land to see what he could do for the Christians there. Though he had no legal authority, he was received as the virtual ruler of Jerusalem for the four years he was there. Louis's presence helped cool factions among the Christians living in Jerusalem. He improved the defenses at several cities and established a garrison of knights at Acre. Louis then had to return to France. During absence, the Mamluk Sultan Barbar waged a vigorous jihad massacring or enslaving Christians wherever he found them. At Antioch, the entire population, including women and children, was killed. The single greatest massacre of the entire crusading era. Up to that point, Antioch had been the oldest of the crusading states, lasting 170 years. St. Louis's second crusade in 1270 was even better organized than his first but did not head to the Holy Land, nor to Egypt. Instead, it sought to fend off the Muslim influence closer to home, at Tunis, a city across the Mediterranean Sea from Sicily. Tunis was thought to be relatively weak and would only be a brief stop on the way to the east. The Crusaders easily captured Carthage, but then decided to wait for Charles of Anu and his knights to join them from Sicily. They ended up waiting six months through the summer heat. There was an outbreak of diseases in the Crusader camp, leading to many of the soldiers' deaths. King Louis's son John was among those who died, and Louis, stricken with grief, himself fell ill and died. The Second Crusade of St. Louis failed to achieve anything, not even to reach their final destination. We can compare Frederick II and St. Louis IX and their crusades, in the eyes of the world, Frederick was more successful than Louis. Frederick was able to regain several of the holy cities, including Jerusalem, during a ten-year truce, while Louis failed to gain any lands or cities. But in the eyes of the Christians of the Middle Ages and until today, it is Louis, not Frederick, that has become the model of the selfless warrior of Christ. 
while both took the crusader vow to visit the holy sites and give protection to residents and pilgrims to the holy land saint louis was guided entirely by his love of god and the desire to show charity to his fellow brothers and sisters in the east frederick on the other hand refusing to keep his vow incurred the penalty of excommunication instead of seeking forgiveness from god and reconciliation with the church he finally did go to jerusalem not motivated by spiritual reasons but only to gain worldly power this is an important lesson for us not just for our participation in sports but in all that we do as jesus taught what profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It is much better having to suffer losing sometimes in our sports activities while acting as disciples of Jesus, rather than being one who wins at all costs, even to sacrifice going to Mass, spending time with God, or treating others with his respect. We too want to be selfless warriors for Jesus, following the example of St. Louis.